In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, on the first Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost, the great Feast of Pentecost, we gather in the church, and we come, although we are certain that it is not yet Lent, we come to the church all decorated in red, the clergy are wearing red, and we wonder exactly what is happening and why. It is true that tomorrow we begin the summer Lenten period of the Apostles' Fast, but it is not just to get a head start on changing of the colors to red or because we just didn't want to wait that we are wearing red, but because we are celebrating today the Feast of All Saints. And frankly speaking, this feast from its earliest times was mostly a feast of the martyrs, and therefore it's traditional to wear red on this day. Last week, we glorified the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And although God, the Holy Trinity, was revealed to us at the Jordan when our Lord was baptized, frankly speaking, the understanding, especially of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> was not clear at that time. The Spirit descended upon him like a dove. But that's about all that we understood. At the Feast of Pentecost, we understand to the greatest extent possible that we can with our weak human minds, the Holy Trinity and how the various hypostases, wonderful Greek word, how the different hypostases of the Trinity work, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit becomes very clear to us at Pentecost when he descends upon the apostles and they begin to speak in these different tongues of those people who had gathered in Jerusalem for the feast of the Old Testament Pentecost. And so last week, the feast is all about glorifying the Holy Trinity. This week, the feast is about glorifying those who glorified the Holy Trinity with their lives. The choir of the saints is as diverse as mankind. The icon there with Christ in the middle and all the saints around him, it helps us to understand the great diversity of holiness that we find in the church. As we said, in the early church, the saints were mostly martyrs because the persecution was very strong and many people died for the faith. After the church came out of the catacombs, then the diversity of saints began to grow. Monasticism grew up, and from the monastic ranks came many saints. At one time in the church, during the time of the great Christological and Trinitarian controversies of the 4th and 5th and 6th centuries, any bishop who did not leave the faith who did not apostatize, was considered to be a saint. The pressure was so great. And many righteous people also, from the ranks of the married, have also attained the heavenly kingdom. And we begin to see more of this as the church lives in the open. But today's feast is not just about the saints that we know. And specifically, it is about those also that we do not. Because when we talk about the word saint, which is an interesting word, St. Paul uses it very broadly. When St. Paul is talking about saints, he basically means all the believers. Okay, that's a very sort of broad way to use this. We could also mean all those who have attained the heavenly kingdom, both those that we know and those that we do not. And the way that we usually use it, the way we usually use this word is all those who have been glorified, not just in the heavenly kingdom, but also on earth. Because there are certain of those who attain the heavenly kingdom that the Lord deigns to also glorify on this earth. That is, from their relics, from our intercessions to them, come miracles. And so we have this great choir of saints 
And these are not people who get in the way of us approaching the Lord. On the contrary, they are those who help us to even more efficaciously approach the Lord. Why is that? We will have to ask the Lord that question because I don't know the answer to it and I don't think anyone else does either. The Lord has deigned that some will be glorified on this earth, that some will answer prayers very efficaciously, very quickly, to help greatly. For instance, St. John of San Francisco that our brotherhood is named after and whose icon is there on the wall. So many people have received help from St. John that when the bishops who had known St. John didn't want to glorify him because they had known him. And that's a very strong tradition in the church. Usually you wait about 100 years before you would glorify anyone. But they couldn't keep the veneration of St. John down. Not that they were trying to, but it just, it was so great because there were so many miracles that were coming from St. John's sarcophagus that he was glorified from the bottom up, as it should be. And St. Senya, how many of us have received help by asking St. Senya to pray to God for us? Many, I will say, many in this parish have received help from St. Senya. And so it is that when we ask the saints to entreat the Lord for us, very often our prayers are heard. Perhaps this is because the Lord wants us to emulate them, to follow them, to look at them as examples, and to try to do what they have done. Now the time of open persecution is not now. We don't have people rounding us up and asking us to renounce our faith and killing us if we don't. But it wasn't that long ago that that happened. And in the history of the church, if we look at the history of the church, we can understand that someday again that will happen. But we haven't been blessed to live in that time. Our time is different. But nonetheless, whether the exploit, the spiritual exploit of a given saint is martyrdom, or living a righteous life, or living a monastic life, they all follow today's gospel. If you will confess me before men, then I will confess you before my Father in heaven. But if you will not confess me before men, also I will not confess you before my Father in heaven. And also in the Gospel it says, if you love these things of the world more than you love Christ, then you have your priorities mixed up. The saints had their priorities straight. Everyone lives in a different time. We are not called to emulate exactly the life of the Christians who lived in the 5th century. Right? We can say, well, they didn't use cell phones, therefore we should not use cell phones. That's not the kind of thing that the church is calling us to. Although a little less use of cell phones might be good, but that's a different sermon. <laughs> what the church is calling us to is to follow the path of holiness that they follow. Where they had their priorities right. Where they put God first and everything else came according to the Lord's will afterwards. Brothers and sisters, we can do that too. In fact, not only can we do that, that is our calling. We are called to follow the saints. We are called to be saints ourselves. We are called to become so close to Christ that through His energies we begin to resemble Him. Not outwardly, but inwardly. And that inward resemblance will spread out even to others. As St. Seraphim of Sorov said, save yourself and a thousand around you will also be saved. So brothers and sisters, when we come to this feast, we often say, oh yes, the monks and the priests, they are the saints, they are the saints. You can ask my wife if I'm a saint. Again, another sermon. But the point is this, it's not just the monks and the priests. It's not just the monks and the priests. St. Macarius says, by the way, that the road to hell is paved with the skulls of unworthy priests. So they always remind us that before we are ordained, and I think it's a good thing to be reminded of. But brothers and sisters, the point is this. We are called to be part of this icon. We are called to that sainthood that the Lord gives to us freely. We can 
follow the saints. We can tread exactly the same path that they did. But it's up to us to decide to do that. Nobody can force you to do that. No one can say to you, you must get your priorities straight. I may say to you, you should get your priorities straight, but nobody can force you to do this. Nobody can force you to emulate those who have come before us. But those who came before us, the saints that we see in today's icon, well, brothers and sisters, they have attained the heavenly kingdom. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is exactly what we are doing on this earth, is preparing ourselves for the same. Yes, we are probably planning to kind of squeak in when no one is looking, when St. Peter is not manning the pearly gates as the uh, sort of contemporary uh, ideal of what heaven will be. But, nonetheless, we are called to this sainthood that all who have come before have attained. So, brothers and sisters, on this day, this universal feast of the Church, there is no Orthodox Christian that today is not celebrating the Feast of All Saints. All of us, together, brothers and sisters in Christ, are celebrating this great feast. Let's not just go home and take our pen and make an X on this day and say, well, this day is done now, and I look at Monday when I begin to fast. If we do that, we've missed the point entirely. But if we can reflect on the lives that the saints lived, how they ordered their priorities so that God came first, and that they trusted Him that He would do everything else for them as was necessary for their salvation, then, brothers and sisters, we're on the path. We are on the path that they have trod before us, and that path leads to the heavenly kingdom. And may the Lord grant this to all of us. Amen. Благословение Господне на вас, Того благодати ви человеку любим всегда, не присно и во век и веку.